With us here in the studio, Erica Payne, president of the Agenda Project, a liberal organization, and from Toronto, Canada. Amelia Antonetti, an advocate for small business who owns a small business herself. So am I going wrong here, Ms. Antonetti? No, not at all. Not, not, not at all. And, and here, here's the problem, is that we are misdefining the word rich. And I keep saying this in my mantra over and over again. Don't confuse a $250,000 business with millions and billionaires. It's, we're, not in, we're in the same category, but we don't live the same type of lifestyles. So when you want to talk about rich, you're talking about the businesses in your community that if we continue this class warfare, will no longer be there. And we will be, begin to be communities of just big brands, and big names and big corporations and you're going to lose the mom and pops because we're barely hanging on as it is and that is where you're going to lose the innovation. So the class warfare is going to tear our communities apart at its core. This is wrong definitions. Rich no, most of the people in that category are not rich. They're small business owners trying to survive and we get paid last. Okay, now what did you react to? How did you feel when you heard those two women in Britain say it's the rich people? So it's, it's okay to riot the rich people. I mean, this class warfare now is getting to be pretty intense. Well, I, I mean, what's happening in Britain is horrifying, and I think that their reaction of hope there's a riot tonight is also horrifying. But I think that you've got to look at what happens to human beings when they are pushed to the to the edge of their sanity, you know, and this is not some people turn into animals, all people will so, turn so people into in animals Britain, if pushed. People in far Great Britain enough. in London are, are pushed to the edge of their sanity and they have free health care. They have generous unemployment benefits, pension benefits. The unions are strong there. They're pushed to the edge of insanity? You know, when you look at this community, Tottingham, where this all started, this is not a community that is, you know, a middle class community. I mean, you're talking about no, people. But, but in a capitalist number, society, a they're always going to be. She, well, yeah, people because they're in uneducated people. Many of them are immigrants. Many of them can't speak the language. Of course, they're going to be unemployed. I mean, look, the liberal mindset has brought us to economic disaster here in America, in my opinion. Well, you in know, my opinion, you, you, your agenda project, Alan Combs, uh, Barney Frank have brought this country to economic ruin because you fail to understand that we are a capitalistic nation. And in that system, there are winners and there are losers. If you take all the incentive away, from succeeding and start to give people entitlements, you're going to have what you have in England. Where's mine? Give me more. And that's what's happening here. And that's what the stock market is telling you today, that our entitlement society, Erica, that our $14.5 trillion debt is no longer sustainable, yet you want more spending, more. So, Bill, if you look at the S&P downgrade and the negative outlook that they Right. gave us. If you look at the base case scenario and the downside, all those factors are basically same. The only difference between the base scenario on which they based the downgrade and the upside, which is we'll get out of this and maybe get to a decent credit rating again, the single only difference, if you read that report, is the ability to raise taxes and I've, on and I agree the wealthy with, I, and letting no, no. the Bush it's tax cuts expire. It's not the ability to expire. raise taxes on the wealthy. It's, it's letting it's, the Bush tax cuts no. expire. That is the single that only is, difference. That that is report, fallacious. Bill. That's fallacious. You can raise revenue, more revenue, and we showed it yesterday. Bush had much more revenue coming in because the economy was good, and you can raise it by a flat tax and other things. Taxing the rich isn't going to do it. Now, when you hear uh, Ms. Antonetti, and I, I mean, I'm siding with you and not Erica, and it's not really fair. I don't want to gang up on Erica. That's, that's not okay. fair. But, but I sincerely believe that this country now is at the breaking point, that you can't spend any more money, yet President Obama doesn't seem to believe that. And that is the simplicity that I'm trying to bring to this argument. So is there something here I'm missing from your point of view? Well, and I think what is really, really missing the point is that business owners are at their wits' end. They are business now owners are at their wits' end. It is not 
worth it. They're talking about closing up. They're well, saying they're not going to hire anybody, that's for sure. All right, so she says, I th I she, she's, also, she's, she's in charge, of, that call she's in charge of a, a small business. I ran a small business for 10 years. I mean, this is actually preposterous. The reason that small businesses are concerned is because there is not enough demand in the economy. If you look at the jobs report that's not from true. last month, I'm going to finish my point. If you look at the jobs report from last month, we had a net gain of 117,000 jobs. The reason we only had a net gain of, of 117,000 jobs instead of 157,000 jobs was because because 40 people in the public sector got laid off. Those are 40,000 people who cannot take their clothes to the dry cleaners, who cannot you, well, take wait, their wait. kids to a local restaurant. So if small, small businesses, businesses are suffering, it is because like we are continuing to lay people wait off. You think that small business like uh, Ms. Antonetti represents are want to hire people? They don't. They're afraid of I Obamacare. I think They're that small businesses would really like place. some customers. And the best way for them to have customers is to increase demand. And the best way to increase demand is to put uh, people to work. We've got so an 18% unemployment uh, record and 40% of our country scared. does not I, have internet access. I'm, I'm so that's, a, that's an area that we can I'm build. Gonna, look, we means the federal government and you got to stop it. Ms. Anthony, I'm giving you the last word. Go ahead. It is absolutely not lack of demand. It is lack of internal margin. As he goes after rules and regulations and pushes the small that transportation person out I mean, of business. You don't business. know what you're talking right. about. Listen to me. Regular. Listen to give. I let you speak. You let me speak. Erica, when you talk about pushing out to, to the transportation, when you talk about what's happening with laying off the people in coal, and now you lay off the coal, the energy is going to go up, which is going to double my bill. You're hitting me where I can no longer make any profit to hire All anybody. Right. I, I don't go. have lack of the top line. Good debate. Good debate.